know who you are, but they don't. Okay, so my name is Emery. I am the only person in the room, apparently. But rest assured, I'm one of you guys. I entered at Activision this summer, and I'm still interning there right now, working on Call of Duty, so big franchise over there. And um, over here, we've got um, my lead programmer, um, David Landau, over there, and he worked at Sony Santa Monica, and Arnold Child is our creative director, and he's um, going to be really powerful for us. So let's just dive right into what Core Overload is. So it's built in UDK, much like Scrap Guard, we're actually going to be in the same room, so it's how it's going to be the UDK lab now. Um, it's a top-down real-time action shooting up, and it's going to be built from the ground up for a network online multiplayer. So one thing that we really want to focus on with this game is that, you know, that online aspect, because a lot of us really like games like Dota, League of Legends, TF2, StarCraft, stuff like that. And we really like that online component of it, and we want something that's kind of like fast and fun to play. So gameplay really comes first in this. And a big thing that Core Blood will feature is a full visual customization that's tied to game mechanics. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. And parts based dynamic construction, which is also going to be explained a little bit later. Um, I guess from the put instrumentors up right here. We have people from uh, Blizzard Entertainment. Um, his name is Grant Huff Cunningham. He's the lead cinematic artist. Um, Sonny Santa Monica. Um, Rob, the lead producer of God of War and the lead network engineer on their, um, what's it called, the God of War Ascension multiplayer effect. So it's really helpful. We have um, Treyarch, um, David Young. He graduated from this program last year. He's working there now as a software engineer. Um, electronic Arts, we have uh, Zin Mu, who also graduated from here last year from the team as a graphics engineer, and then we have Intel, his name is Orion, he was, used to be a uh, software lead at Insomniac, and I said Intel. Let's dive right in. So, what is Core Overload's customization, uh, customization like? Well, it's parts-based, and um, there are five different kind of parts. There's the core, the chassis, weapon, wing, and engine. Each of these parts do a different thing, and, you know, it's very intuitive what these parts do. Obviously, a wing will stabilize your cap, and then it will make it go. A weapon will shoot things, and of course, the battery source for everything, and the chassis to make all. So on the left, we also have um, just some concept art from one of our artists drummed up for one of our crafts. So this is temp art, but let's go over kind of what every part has. So first of all, every part has a name. For example, this is the chassis with <coughs> the matter um, part type. Um, every part will kind of have an image with attachment points on it. So you can kind of see up there, um, you've got two slots for wings, two slots for weapons, and a slot for an engine, and then the middle slot for the core. Um, each part has a requirement to equip it, so um, this has changed a little bit since our initial design. Every part requires power, which the core provide. So you know, if you go over the power limit, your ship won't run, so you're gonna have to be able to budget you know, where I'm gonna allocate these resources when building the ship. Every part has stats, obviously. This one gets 100 HP and weighs 50. <laughs> one thing that the chassis has that a bunch of the other parts don't have is weight. And every part besides the chassis has weight, and you're able to equip certain you know, parts based on that weight limit. And once again, if you go over the weight limit, your ship's too heavy and it can't fly. And every part has a passive or active ability. So in this way, we're trying to make players encourage them to customize their ships as much as possible. Because you know we have all these singular abilities together, but when you put you know five different abilities together, you might make some kind of emergent mechanic, which might be fun. So we're going for. And we have flavor text on these part lists. You know, if there's not room for them, there's not going to be there. But it brings a little bit more to the world's universe. Um, story is not going to be a big focus of ours. We're really going for gameplay first. And story is probably only going to be told through these little flavor text on each of the parts. But it's going to be there. So let's go over the parts. So this is one thing that's temp art, it's uh, for our core part, it's called the potato, which then you see the flavor tag stands for port portable omni turbo action tape organic core. That's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you can see the stats, you know, the power that this one provides, the hitbox size, and the overload amount. And every core has an ability called an overload. You charge up your overload meter, you can use it. It's kind of like that, you know, ultimate ability. Um, so this one unleashes an area effect attack and destroys including bullets and deals lots of damage. So um, a big thing about top-down shoot 'em up games, if you guys have ever played them, is that hitbox. And if, if you guys have ever played like stuff like Toho, your hitbox is like two pixels or something like that. So we could use that as a balancing mechanic in our game. So, for example, a core with a smaller hitbox is maybe weaker, gives less power, <laughs> but you're less vulnerable. Whereas a core with a bigger hitbox, because it's more powerful, radiates more energy, and you know there's a bigger hitbox. So there's balancing. And what we want to do with this game is we're not going to have strict upgrades. Everything is going to be kind of a side grade. So you're going to have to pay for that benefit that you want to downgrade somewhere else. Okay, so once again, here's the chassis. Um, 
a chassis is the main site for all the attachments. Um, weapons, this is an example of a weapon. Everything requires stats once again. Weapons are responsible for most of your damage output, the damage, the attack speed. And we're playing with an idea called heat mechanics. So if you hold down your weapon too long, you'll overheat it. So every time you fire a shot, it'll build heat, and then you have to wait a while for it to cool down. And this is to prevent the players from you know, holding down the firing button and just flying around the way. And for example, this, oh, go back. Um, this weapon up here has an active ability. Like so if you right click, your like active ability so like uh, increases, and your heat also increases. So we have just a bunch of balancing abilities that we want to do. Um, this is a way that provides stabilization, which is control. And what control is, is that, once again, if you ever play top-down shoot-em-up games, there's a kind of a drift whenever you're moving. So if any of you guys have played, you know, the classic Asteroids game, you know, a couple taps of the arrow keys will send you drifting in different directions. And what we're aiming to do with this bounce mechanic is, um, you know, more control makes it much more precise. So once again, going back to the Toho example, you know, you have extreme precision control in that game, whereas in Asteroids, you have very, very drifty mechanics, and we can bounce that using these ways. And um, here's an example of an idea we're toying with, is this wing that has another part on it. So for example, this wing, you know, attaches to that main wing slot, but you're also able to attach a weapon to that slot, so you're kind of able to expand your chassis original um, attachment sense. And here's a trigger figure. And once again, the engine is the final thing, the final part of the ship, you're able to make your ship move, you know, control how fast it goes with it. Every engine comes with a dash ability, you know, able, an, an ability to burst forward or run away from a fight because we want players to be able to engage and disengage at will. And, you know, put everything together and just like that. So, how do we want to, like, kind of give this game depth is through our dynamic construction mechanic. Because it's a tall down shooter, it's pretty simple to grasp. You know, we're going with WSID to move in the four directions and then the mouse to turn around point so you can straight and shoot. And what we're doing with that, um, it's a really simple basic core mechanic, but then we're also enabling dynamic construction. So when you're able, you're able to shoot off people's individual parts. So for example, you know, I'm firing at this guy's wing and it breaks off, and therefore my opponent loses those stats, but you know, their ship is still alive, but they've lost you know, some control and some speed. And what we can do with this is that basically we're creating much deeper gameplay because you're able to strategically target individual parts and then, you know, maybe there's an opponent who's much stronger than I am and maybe I'm the one help or something like that. If I'm able to dart around, take out your weapons, and he can't shoot. So a lot of what we did this summer is that um, we decided on our art style and kind of really worked on how we did that. Um, we don't have internet here, so I can't show you the 3D models, but you know, here, here are some of the ones we made. This is obviously TF2's health pack, but we really liked kind of um, the expressive look in the game that was both simple but suggested at greater detail. <laughs> so we did our test for ourselves and remade the art pack in, you know, by ourselves, remodeled it, retextured it, and then on the left is an example of an engine part we made. So, you know, it's called the Tri-Engine, it's got, you know, three exhaust pipes and it'll plug into your ship somewhere. So, the way we accomplished this is, you know, this is getting a little bit more technical, but... Yeah, we, should, yeah, we should move on to yeah. team use and stuff like that. So. so, you know, we have concepts, we have quite a bit of artists on our team. Um, I myself worked on a lot of game projects last year as an artist, three in fact. Um, so um, we, have, we have quite a bit of our talent. Um, we also have been recruiting heavily from remote, um, for remote artists. We actually got in contact with a PubMed service site called conceptships.org. And he runs like the biggest blog website for cool spaceships concepts essentially. And we, you know, sent him our flyer, and within an hour we got about 45 emails from artists who are interested from all over the world, like Lithuania, Turkey, London, etc. So we interviewed a bunch of them, and we kind of boiled them down to you know, you know, who we thought was responsible enough to follow through with their commitment with an unpaid project. And we really ended up with some really nice stuff. So who are we looking for? Well, we're looking for 3D low poly models. Once again, this is a networked game, and there's going to be a bunch of players on screen, um, up to, I believe, 16 players on the screen. So we will need each ship to be low poly. We're probably going to cap it at around 3K tries per ship in total once the parts are all together. Um, we're looking for multiplayer balanced designers. Um, if any of you guys have ever played you know, multiplayer online games like League of Legends or StarCraft, you know, every small number really counts, and we want that experience to feel really good. And what we're doing with this game to limit scope is that we're only making one map. Much like how, you know, Dota has their one main map with three lanes, we want to make one map that just really feels good to play. So we need a lot of, or not a lot, I would say probably around four um, multiplayer balance designers for both parts, maps, and just overall mechanics of the game. Um, we're looking for a dedicated 
dedicated UI or HUD artist and designer because that's a really big part of how you interact with the game. And then background and environment artists, obviously, just to kind of make that background really pop. And that's it for now. If you guys have any questions, feel free to contact me. That's it. Total team still about uh, in the class, kind of every time, every time, seventeen-ish. Yeah, we have a lot of people who are in the class, but yeah, that's fine. I'm thinking more of seats. That's seats, why, that's why yeah. I'm yeah. <sighs> Trying to figure out seat and, and temperature of the room. <laughs> so, <laughs> no guarantees. We'll bring it. Smell down. of the room. I guess. Did, did, did we hear your uh, industry mentors? Uh, yeah. Yes. So we have Graham, yeah, yeah, Graham Cunningham from Blizzard is the lead cinematic artist. So, yeah. cool. All right. Who's next? David. It's a great game to get 10 passes in the